The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is an expansive game with plenty of locations to explore, items to collect, and enemies to defeat. However, as you begin your quest across the land of Hyrule, it becomes quite clear that what you arm yourself with is critical, and money is king. There are many ways to find weapons and earn rupees in Breath of the Wild, but there are always easier, faster, and more efficient methods. To that end, this guide covers some of the easiest to acquire weapons from the game's outset, as well as one of the most efficient methods of grinding monsters that will net some 5,000 rupees in a single run. If that's what you're looking for, then look no further. I'm William Strife, and this is the Zelda Breath of the Wild Weapon and Money Guide. Before getting to the actual list of weapons and their locations, it's important to first cover a particular game mechanic called the Blood Moon. Without getting too specific or spoiling anything, the Blood Moon just functions as a way for the world to reset, so the game doesn't break or end up empty and devoid of things to do. Because it functions as a reset, though, it means that all the weapons and enemies covered here will reappear once the Blood Moon occurs. This means you can regularly return to the following locations and always have a valuable weapon or item in your pack for when you need it. Now, with that covered, let's move on to the first and easiest weapon to acquire that's just lying around. We'll start with a Great Flame Blade, which is a monster of a weapon at the start of the game. The easiest location to acquire one is on the west side of Hyrule Field, just north of the Great Plateau where you start. The blade is specifically located on an ancient tree stump, just around the corner from Kamyatak Shrine, and right west of the central tower. This burning edge is surrounded by a handful of fairly strong enemies, and also only accessible via a rather narrow bridge with a deadly drop. This means that the best method to reach the sword is with your glider. Just climb to the top of the hill to the southeast of the stump, leap off, sail over, and dash the rest of the way in past the nasties around it. The real trick to getting this weapon safely, though, is to just rush in, grab it, and then warp out to a shrine to avoid dealing with the quote-unquote guards. That's the safest and fastest method, at least, but to be certain, there's nothing stopping you from turning around and wrecking the enemies with your shiny new Great Flame Blade. Another great weapon to go searching for, especially during the earlier parts of the game, is a Silver Longsword. Unlike many other weapons, this arm spawns in an extremely easy-to-access location, which is behind the Nayiz Yohama Shrine that serves as the fast travel point for the Zora capital, Zora's Domain. Given that you're directed to this location as part of the game's main quest, it's more of a long trek to reach than it is difficult to find. However, for posterity, and if you need a heading, Zora's Domain is northeast from the Great Plateau and still northeast from Kakariko Village. Before moving on, though, it's worth mentioning that there's also a fairly simple set of a Zora sword and shield on the bridge heading west when leaving the domain. Not particularly strong equipment, but still good in a pinch. Moving on, let's take a look at where to find a Great Thunderblade. As the name suggests, this weapon is a two-handed elemental beast that shocks your enemies whenever it's charged. As luck would have it, you can find some of this nasty edge work northwest of the Great Plateau, just sitting out in the open, not unlike the Great Flame Blade. You specifically want to look down between three rock formations on Kuho Mountain, south of Rito Village and northwest of Tabantha Tower on Nero Hill. The quickest way to get there is to either climb or warp to the tower, then just glide over, keeping in mind that first climbing to Bantha Tower can be a task within itself, though it can be easier depending on what angle you approach from. And no matter your method, though, you can find the Great Thunderblade just sitting out in the open in the canyon-like intersection between three towering rocks. Now, let's look at a non-elemental sword worth getting, the Royal Claymore. This blade deals both large amounts of damage and has decent durability. Initially getting to it, however, is the real challenge. This massive arm is reliably found stuck in a hunk of debris on top of the Woodland Tower, which is northeast of the Great Plateau. More specifically, it is northeast of Hyrule Castle and southeast of the Great Hyrule Forest. The true challenge to first reaching this tower, however, is fighting through the encampment of monsters that surrounds it, and not falling into the swamp below that will swallow you whole. So long as you use the wooden towers built by all of the nasties, you'll be able to scale the tower even with a small stamina wheel. Anyway, no matter if you climb or warp to the tower, the Royal Claymore's exact location is on top of the shell covering the tower. 
To get to it, just shimmy your way to the outside face where the broadsword is just waiting to be collected. That would normally be everything, but before moving on to how to make money, there's one last place where you can find many useful weapons. Hyrule Castle. Now, while exploring Ganon's Nest of Evil is no easy task, it's not terribly dangerous to only go in from a specific angle and only grab a few arms. To that end, if you wish to give this tactic a shot, you want to enter the castle via a secret dock on the north side. To get there, First, find the large red and black monolith on the bank north of the castle, west of the previously mentioned Woodland Tower, west of Raru Hillside, and south of Elma Knolls. Using your paraglider, leap off from next to the monolith and aim for a small flat section of land with a short wall on which a guardian sits. No worries, if you beeline straight to the wall and stay close to it, the guardian will lose sight of you and be unable to attack. Now from here, head right or west to the cliff edge and leap off flying into the southern tunnel. Inside you'll find a small shrine on the left wall with a great flame blade. Land, grab it, fight off a single Lizalfos, then venture to the far end of the chamber via the stairs to light a large brazier which reveals the Asa Kosa shrine. Activate it with your Sheikah Slate and you can easily return to replunder the castle's riches every time the Blood Moon hits, without having to take the long way in. Anyway, continue up past the shrine and use Magnesis to enter the library. Off of this room are several hidden chambers found behind bookshelves you can move with Magnesis, each filled with arms and loot. The next stop, however, is the armory. To reach it, you need to head through the top door on the opposite wall of the intact staircase. In the next room, you'll find a great frostblade connected to a corridor with a couple of enemies, of which the armory is at the end of. Inside the armory, other than one large moblin, you'll find an assortment of royal guard arms, rusted weaponry, and some supply crates. Once you've grabbed all you want, just open the map and select Leave Area. Then, once you've warped out of the castle, you'll be able to warp out to any shrine that you want. A bit of a convoluted process, but really, once you know the route, it's not too difficult, and the enemies become less challenging the more experience you have with them. With a fair number of weapons out of the way, the next thing to look at is one of the fastest ways to make money that pairs well with finding weapons. Scattered across the landscape of Hyrule are large rock monsters called Stone Talus, and when each one is destroyed, they drop a series of gemstones, including amber, opal, topaz, ruby, sapphire, diamond, and luminous stone. Defeating these early game world bosses is a fairly simple affair, as you just need to attack the ore vein that serves as the weak point. They do come in a range of difficulties, though. This is determined by both how much health they have and where the ore node is on their body. For instance, on the head versus on the back. That being said, fighting them all works more or less the same. When you approach the seemingly innocuous boulder pile, they wake up and you need to stun them by either destroying an arm with bombs or shooting the ore vein with an arrow. When you do this, the talus will fall over, wide open for attack. At this point, you want to run in, climb on top, and wail away on the weak point. As these creatures are made of stone, you'll do more damage with an iron hammer or some kind of boulder or stone crusher, especially if you hold down the attack button and start spinning. However, if the ore node is on the back of the beast, a lance, spear, or especially a drill shaft is your best bet, as it will allow you to reach the weak point while still standing on the creature's head. Overall though, any weapon will do, and once you get a feel for the stone talus's pattern of attack and movement. Now that you know how to take on a stone talus, the next thing is where to find them. Right here, we'll cover eight around the starting area of the map, but overall there are some 40 of these mythic creatures across Hyrule, which includes special elemental talus in some of the farther reaches of the landscape. Anyway, the first stone talus is also the most likely one you'll encounter, and the easiest to defeat. It's located on the Great Plateau in the Forest of Spirits, just north of the Shrine of Resurrection. The second one is found north of the Great Plateau, on a small island in Lake Colmo, and is of moderate difficulty due to the lack of space to fight it. 
Talus III is sleeping on a hill east of the Great Plateau, and just southeast of the outpost ruins. This stone giant is one of the more difficult to battle, as its weak point is on its back, making it less than easy to reach. If you find this foe a bit more challenging than you like, just remember to try using halberds or spears to reach the weak spot while standing on its back. To find the fourth stone monster, keep traveling east of the Great Plateau and across the Hylia River. It's in the shallow water of the Dia village ruins south of the road and over some mountains that you'll find the hulking beast. However, this is the strongest of the stone talus covered here, and its weak spot is on its back, so don't worry if you can't beat it until you have some more health or better armor. From this stone giant, you can find the fifth and significantly easier one by heading north to a place halfway between Batra Lake and South Nabi Lake, just on the edge of the nearby forest. Continuing further east of the Great Plateau, you'll find the remaining three stone talus around the dueling peaks, which the main road splits right through. Number six is a fairly easy Junior Talus, found on the southern side of the Southern Dueling Peak, sleeping in a fairly flat area at its base. The seventh one is an easy to defeat Senior Talus, found in a similarly flat area on the west slope of the North Peak, not far east from the Dueling Peak Tower. Finally, the eighth and last stone talus covered in this guide is found a ways north of the Northern Dueling Peak, sleeping in the lowland between Marble Ridge and Lake Sela. Once you find and defeat each stone monster, the only remaining task is to find a merchant and sell every precious rock to fund your adventures. But don't forget that this is also a great way to farm gems for upgrading some armor when the time comes. But that's a guide for another time. No matter if you're new or a veteran to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, hopefully the advice covered here will help you in your adventures across the land of Hyrule. Just don't forget to save often, and back off if a challenge is too daunting. Thanks for watching and listening, I'm William Strife, and these video guides are made possible through viewer donations on Patreon. If you haven't already, please consider contributing so I can continue making them. I hope to see you again in another video guide another time.